Prepare for blast off, because there's some exciting news from NASA coming our way. Care to look into the fascinating world of Saturn's moon Titan? NASA's groundbreaking Dragonfly Rotorcraft Lander is set to take off in 2027, looking to explore this mysterious space object. Now let me introduce you to Titan. It's an icy celestial body with an atmosphere filled with nitrogen, and it might even have an underground ocean. Titan is also home to rivers and lakes that flow on its surface. But guess what? They're not filled with water like our lovely planet. They have methane instead. Now let's check out Titan's celestial credentials. It's not just any moon. It's the second largest in our entire solar system. It's only 2% smaller than the biggest moon we have hanging around our neighborhood, which is Jupiter's Ganymede. Titan's size even puts Mercury to shame. And did I mention that its atmosphere is four times denser than that of Earth's? Thanks to Titan's lower gravity and thick atmosphere, Dragonfly is the perfect robotic companion to uncover its hidden treasures. Let's move on to Dragonfly, the star of NASA's upcoming mission to Titan. This cosmic drone is not your average explorer. Equipped with a full array of interesting gadgets, Dragonfly is like a flying laboratory, ready to uncover more secrets of Titan. It's the first interplanetary rotorcraft lander probe, designed to take us on an epic journey of discovery. And don't let its name fool you. Dragonfly won't just buzz around aimlessly. This technological marvel is able to glide for several miles between different locations on Titan's surface. Think of it as a cosmic Uber service for scientists. And speaking of technology, Dragonfly is carrying some seriously cool equipment. It'll feature the Drill for Acquisition of Complex Organics, Draco, instrument, which will help us scoop out material from Titan, while the Dragonfly Mass Spectrometer, RAMS, will analyze what these samples are made of. But how did we stumble upon Titan? It was March 25, 1655, when a Dutch astronomer was out there with his telescope, exploring the cosmos. Lo and behold, he spotted something amazing. It was Titan, the biggest moon of Saturn. Fast forward almost 300 years to 1944, when another cool astronomer jumped into the picture. He was doing some experiments with light when he figured out that Titan actually has its very own atmosphere. There's more to this story. In 1979, the Pioneer 11 spacecraft decided to take a joyride through the Saturn system. It confirmed all the cool things scientists had previously speculated about Titan, like its temperature and mass. However, there was one tiny mistake. Those sneaky scientists thought Titan might be the biggest moon in the entire solar system. Oops, wrong guess. Nevertheless, Titan had this mysterious, dense atmosphere that kept everyone on their toes. Now let's zoom in on the 1980s, when the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft make their grand entrance. These cosmic explorers flew past Saturn, and they wanted to get a good look at Titan's surface. That's when Titan decided to play a game of hide-and-seek with them. Its hazy atmosphere made it impossible to see what was going on down there. So all the Voyagers managed to capture were images of a lonely orange world. However, they did spot a fancy blue haze hanging out in the upper atmosphere. Things started to get really exciting in the 1990s. The Hubble Space Telescope joined the party and decided to take some cool snapshots of Titan using special infrared light. This clever device managed to pierce through the haze and voila! The Hubble images revealed differently colored areas on Titan, almost like a giant cosmic chessboard. We now know that there's even a bright spot as wide as Australia down there. However, despite these fantastic pictures, the mystery of what lay beneath Titan's haze was still unsolved. It was 2004 when the stage was set for Cassini and its European sidekick, the Huygens Probe. They were like the ultimate dynamic duo, ready to take on Saturn. Cassini started orbiting the ringed planet and immediately focused its attention on Titan. The big moment finally arrived. On January 14, 2005, 
the Huygens probe pierced through Titan's atmosphere. During its descent, Huygens collected all sorts of amazing data, snapping images and analyzing the atmosphere. The probe then transmitted this valuable information back to Cassini, which, like a cosmic courier, sent it to us eagerly waiting Earthlings. Over the next 13 years, Cassini flew close to Titan over 100 times, using all sorts of fancy instruments to get a good look at the moon's surface and atmosphere. Scientists could finally confirm that Titan had clouds, lakes, and rivers. And there was also some rain pouring down its surface. Thankfully for us, Titan isn't the only moon in our solar system that could technically harbor life. Take the wondrous moon of Neptune called Triton. For starters, it's the largest moon of Neptune, but it's also a real oddball. Among the many moons out there, only five are known to be geologically active. And guess what? Triton is proudly part of this exclusive club. It loves to show off its geysers, which spew nitrogen gas. Picture Triton as a fashionista in an icy ensemble. Its surface is mainly frozen nitrogen, giving it a chill, frosty vibe. You might want to bring a warm coat if you ever visit. Now, you may be wondering how Triton manages to keep warm in such a frigid environment. Well, it's got a secret weapon called tidal forces. Imagine Triton and Neptune engaged in a cosmic dance, creating gravitational friction. This dance seems to generate some heat, helping to warm up Triton's waters. With all this talk about heat, you might be getting excited about the possibility of life on Triton. However, finding life on this moon is about as likely as finding a unicorn riding a skateboard. Voyager 2, the only mission to ever fly by Triton, made its journey back in 1989. And if you're hoping for another mission to Triton anytime soon, well, let's just say the stars aren't aligning in our favor, literally. The window for a mission to Triton opens up only once every 13 years, because our planet and Jupiter need to be perfectly aligned for the landing to work. Scientists would use the gravitational pull of the largest planet in our solar system to safely deliver a probe on Triton. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, or should I say, the polar bear. It's so cold on Triton that hopes for life to survive unfrozen are about as slim as a toothpick. Sorry, potential little microbes. You might need a few extra sweaters to set up shop down there. Even though Triton may not be the most welcoming place for life, it's still a celestial gem worth exploring. Scientists also believe Triton wasn't always a part of Neptune's crew. As it turns out, Triton was most likely just minding its business, hanging around aimlessly in the distant Kuiper Belt. Along came Neptune with its mighty gravitational pull and snatched Triton right out, officially making it a moon of its own. Just like our trusty satellite, Triton is also stuck in a permanent face-off with Neptune. One side of Triton always has its eyes locked on the planet. As for this amazing moon's fate, things aren't looking so good in the long run. It's already getting closer and closer to Neptune every day. Why is that, you might wonder? The problem is with those tidal interactions, which are playing some cosmic tricks on Triton. They're causing its orbit to wither away, like a slow-motion dance towards Neptune. Scientists predict that in about 3.6 billion years, Triton will cross an invisible boundary. If these current calculations are correct, there are two possible scenarios. It'll either have a collision with Neptune's atmosphere, or it might just break up into tiny pieces. If the latter happens, an all-new ring system would form around Neptune, just like the one we see around Saturn nowadays. Triton is not the only satellite that might end up this way. Phobos, one of the Martian moons, is likely to disintegrate too, and sooner, in 30 to 50 million years. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.